Hello YouTube, Mr. Report newsletter and Tutor Group subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today's the last day of 2019, December 31st. And this is the Mr. Report update for newsletter number five. This weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. It's been quite an exciting week in God's Word, to say the least. A lot of things to report on. In uh, John sent in number five, this is a radio series from 2012. Getting a new, it's like 37 or 38 of them back in 2012. Very first one, now they're in order. And it's going to continue growing. Looks like one per week. This week, this week's topic, the differences between God and my Father who art in heaven. And this can be a very heated argument. You take this out on the internet and start debating people. People start debating about, about deity. And there are so many different views. People can be at each other's throats at times so uh, this is a this is a post that I've been putting on boards for well since 2004 2005 2006 this is a greatly shortened version the uh, it took me a little while it took some talking to by the moderators at let me see here which pull up the other browser at this forum right here Bible debates this is where I'm spending quite a bit of time and you can see my the, anything I write on gets watched I'm being watched and uh, the difference between God and my father art in heaven is right here so far I've got the last post written on this so what happens is you're in, you're in the debate forum people come along and, and uh, you present your opening post that's what I'm about to show you it's called an OP if you're unfamiliar with the uh, lingo, opening post. That's what everybody's supposed to be debating about. Advocates are on your side, adversaries on the opposite side. And it's, it's a really great way to test what, what you believe to be the truth. Put it up here. People, Some people can see it, some people can't see it. You know, and see how it goes. And my account since 2004, I've been a member here at ChristianForums.com. That's where we are right here. And this is in the dispensational, uh, dispensationalism room. Because, and I get into that in when I'm writing on this thread right here. That's what you call them, threads. Each one of these in, as an opening post. And then you have a thread of comments that go back and forth. And the original topic starter defends his opening post interpretation. That's the way that it works. And um, some people confuse me with being a dispensationalist. Well, I understand that God deals with different households in different ways. Well, I understand what dispensational means in Ephesians 3, 2, where it's used in other places. But I disagree with the dispies. There are so many different kinds of dispies. They disagree among themselves. But the thing that I will say is that those professing themselves as being dispensationalists, usually they are really uh, strong in the scriptures. They see the difference between the two Gospels, the New Testaments. They see the difference between the two churches. And the, so we at least we have some common ground there to work on where when I go to other places or into even other rooms, they can't see, they can't tell the difference between the Gospel of the Kingdom and our Word of the Cross, Gospel message for today. There's no way that we can have a decent conversation unless we can remove the semantics from the equation. So I'm saying gospel, you know what I'm talking about. The gospel of the grace of God for us today. As opposed to the gospel of the kingdom. Which that's what we've been, that's what I've been sharing with you for the, uh, in the first, in the first mystery report newsletter, the differences between the two gospels. So what we're doing is, if you want a larger view, Got two browsers up here for a reason. 
we're going down this line here, even though I got out of order. We got these two turned around right here in the last couple of weeks. Get back on track next week with the mystery diagrams explained. Having a little bit of difficulty carrying out my original plan because of bannings, because uh, having to go to different websites, trying to keep you updated as we go. And uh, for, the, for those that are wondering what's going on with me and why I'm spending more time on this, right? And the Black, Project Black Star investigation is off the tracks. The Earth changes are not following the pattern that they followed for the last 10 years, particularly for the last five years. Everything is changing. The magma plume formation inside the Earth is changing the dynamic. And our time is short. Our time is short. We're wise to have our doctrine straight whenever we pass. Earth is going to pass through a veil. Earth's going to pass through a veil and everything on the other side of that veil, everything's going to change. You're going to see what I'm when we're on the other side looking back, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's, a, it's going to happen. And looking at the way that the changes are taking place, it seems like, see, silver's on its way back up again. Those of you got it at 16-something, pretty smart. This is um, getting um, emails about how do I get sign up to the uh, program, to the new programs. This is the Black Star. See the Black Star? Did a little updating here. And it could be that the lettering is not going to show up clearly if you use the Firefox browser. That's why this, there's two uh, there's two of these browsers that are pulled up here. Even on my own Firefox browser, the text isn't coming out properly. But this is the way it shows up in uh, the Google Chrome. Everything is exactly right. So premium programs right here. This is the $25 per year. Just get the, get the newsletters just like this one. Logic Black Star. You just want the newsletters? That's where you click right here. It's just two bucks a month. Really, really good deal. You get my book, The Mystery Explained, the ebook version for free. Attached right to that. Then you want to be in the tutor program. You want to be join us on chat on Tuesday nights starting Tuesday, January the 7th, 2020. So this is coming up. The first chat. That's right here. So that's just another two bucks a month. So all these programs just one payment per year in case somebody thinks that this is $25 per month no that's per year you're going to get 52 of these news newsletters I'm showing you right here you're going to access to all the two these five in 2019 and you're going to get access to all 52 for 2020 when you subscribe down here in the black star section up here see it did my best to separate it more so people are are um Less confused. You can get your hands on volume number one of this newsletter right here. And number 50, I just updated that. Number 50 for the Black Star newsletters. This is the website right here. And we're following this pattern, if you're wondering. And it could be that I'm going to do um, Born From Above. That was for Savannah. And the Spirit and Soul already shared this video with somebody on a, one of these um, boards because they were asking me about the Spirit and Soul thing. <laughs> so since Bonnie had already asked that, this is back in 2017, then I just sent him the link to this video it's right here. And the reason that they're here, this, for years, they were only these six introductory videos, but then there were good questions that were asked here, Savannah and Bonnie. And so it seemed to me that it helped people in, to read my book, The Mystery Explained, if they understood. These are uh, questions that I've seen quite a few times. Okay, so let's... Let's get back over here. The differences between God and my Father who art in heaven. Because a lot, a lot of people think that my Father who art in heaven is God. It's important that we know the differences, just like it's important that we know the differences between the two Gospels and the New Testament. That's what keeps us from mixing the doctrinal precepts together. Knowing the differences between the two churches, the Kingdom Church, Peter, John, and James, and the differences between our mystery church. Paul is the steward of our mystery church. Those are two separate dispensations, two different households. God deals with them in different ways. Peter, John, and James, they're under Mosaic law. James 2.10. If you keep the whole law and you're guilty in one point, then you've broken the whole law. 
That agrees with what Christ says in Matthew 5, start at 17. But don't think that I came to, to abolish the law, because he didn't, for the kingdom disciples. But Gentiles have never been under the law. Gentiles, as Paul says, are without the law. Because the law was given to Israel. You can't, just because Moses took the uh, Lord God, who is Christ, gave Moses the law for Israel, that doesn't put the whole world under Mosaic law. Gentiles have never been under the law. And now that we're um, obeyed the gospel, our lives are hidden with Christ in God. We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're finished products. We're done. Because God said so. Because that's the only way we could be perfected. That's the only way that God can gather a body of judges and rulers to judge the world and the angels. We become living tabernacles. Christ dwells in us. God dwells in him. Off we go. God requires us to be members of Lamb's body. He chose us. Using the gospel. He sent the preacher. So now, this week, then we're going to look at the difference between God and my Father in heaven. In heaven. And like I said, this is a very shortened version. The reason I was getting in trouble with these websites was for posting the same post that was on a different website. I never had that problem before. I didn't realize what it was. It took them a little while to explain to me. He says, if you want to be a member here, then you're going to rewrite everything. You're not going to give us what you was posted 15 years ago. And then all of a sudden the light come on and go, boing, okay, I get it now. He said, you can make a reference back to that if you want to quote from it. Don't quote too much. So that's what they're calling spam. It took me a little while to realize that's what it was. So I made up, kissed and made up with the, the administrators and the moderators over at ChristianForums.com. So they released my account. And now um, on, on this site right here, the link should be down here at the bottom. I'm not seeing the link at the bottom. I need to update that before, because for, uh, what I want you to be able to do is click on the link and go to the website. Oh, here it is right there. Forum link. See it? Differences between God and my Father who art in heaven. Okay, this this uh, thread is dedicated to presenting and deliberating the differences between the only true God, characterized as the Almighty, and my Father who art in heaven, who is the spirit witness of the word, testifying with the Son and the Holy Spirit from Matthew twenty-eight, nineteen. I pulled up the verses. And right here. The uh, this is the BibleGateway.com, and you see what you can do is you can put these separated by commas, just single verses, and you can make them list like this. A little advanced feature. So this is where the three witnesses of the Almighty are testifying from. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come the Almighty. These are the three witnesses. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. God who is to come is the spirit witness. I'll show you that in the diagram here in a second. God who was is like the Holy Spirit, water witness, like the earth, water witness, like Eve, water witness. All the water witnesses are helpers. God who is is the blood witness. He's like the Son. The Son testifies for the Word, the original singularity. The Father and the Holy Spirit one day are going to disappear. God who was, the water witness. God who is to come, the Spirit witness. They're both going to disappear. God who is testifies for the original singularity. Who is God of Genesis 1.1. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are the three witnesses of the Word. My Father who art in heaven gets his name from heaven of Genesis 1-1. Have you ever wondered? Then, there's a similarity between those witnesses that I just showed you. God. These are the three witnesses of God right here. Spirit, blood, and water. These are the three witnesses of the, Holy, of the uh, Word. 
which is heaven of Genesis 1-1, where my Father who art in heaven gets his name. I'll show you them in the diagram in a second. But the three witnesses that are right there with them. In Genesis 1-1, God has his three witnesses. The word, heaven, has his three witnesses. I just showed them to you. And the earth has three witnesses. God said, so remember, the earth is made vo formless and void, and darkness is upon the face of the deep, Genesis 1-2. That's the earth being made void. That's recreating Adam's murder in the infinite realm. The earth being Adam, heaven being Christ. It's three principles, Genesis 1-1. God, Christ, Adam. All have members of their body. God has members of his body in the infinite realm. Heaven, members of Christ's body. Earth, members of Adam's body. That's where we are down here right now. Okay. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. Let them separate the waters from the waters. So what you have here is waters above the expanse and waters below the expanse. And God made the expanse. The expanse is in the middle. And separated the waters which were below, which is the earth, and from the waters that were above, which is the heavens. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. So you have Genesis in one in Genesis one one you have heaven, and you have this heaven that's this expanse that's called heaven in Genesis 1.8. They're not the same heaven. There's a heaven and there's a highest heaven. First Kings, what is it? First Kings. No, my, my, my mind's not, my, it's not serving me. I believe it's 8.26 and 27. Okay, so you're seeing the begotten aspect. There are three begotten aspects here. God who is the Son and heaven. They're all and when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. This is talking about what just happened in Genesis 1, 6 through 8. The heavens existed long ago. The earth was formed out of water. Earth is the water witness. The heavens, spirit witness. And this gives you understanding about all of the spirit witnesses how they come first all of them come first these are the three witnesses of the almighty right here the ones that were just read to you god who is god who was god who is to come and this is the living creatures that John sees when he's looking through the throne through the throne I've got a diagram pulled up I'll show you that here you're here in a bit because there's a John's view and there's God's view they look back and forth directly at one another this is what John sees in the middle of the creatures he sees the one with the face of a man the one that's not shown here because it's the three witnesses of the Almighty the one of the face of the man <laughs> that's the lamb that's Christ we see God right in his face God's three witnesses are God to come spirit witness God who is blood witness God who was water witness priest he's the helper so it's like a it's a vehicle of locomotion that's what the Holy Spirit is to the word the vehicle of locomotion like your physical body is to your spirit and your, your soul testifying for the Almighty. God who is is speaking in Genesis 1 saying let us make man in our image. That's God who is speaking and who do you think he's speaking to? He's speaking to God who was and God who is. And he says let's, let's make us let us make man in our image. And when he's talking about our image he's talking about a triune image. A trinity. One, two, three. It's that simple. God who is is speaking. Whenever the Word is made flesh and walks around and talks, guess who that is? That's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is in the same exact position as God who is as the blood witness, in between the Father and the Holy Spirit. Heaven, of Genesis 1, 6-8, testifies in the same exact way, testifying for the original singularity, earth of, of Genesis 1, 1. We learn by the relationships of these different witnesses, we're given pieces of the puzzle. And whenever you look at the charts and you realize there's so many witnesses, they're all testifying when you know their stories, then you begin to hear the angel song. 
bubbling up from within you like the, the tree of life is in your soul and it's bubbling up from the inside it's very exciting whenever you begin to see it it's using the new inner man Christ in you having the mind of Christ this is having the mind not between your ears it's having it in your heart like I said it's really really great stuff whenever you can see it the only true God my God the one who sent our Lord Jesus Christ into the world is God of John, uh, he's right there in uh, in Genesis 1 1 and he's creating the heaven it was an incarnation earth is an incarnation the only realm that is real is God's infinite realm where we are God's. This is eternal life that you may know the only true God, which is God, and Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. See that F right there? Say how it's darkened? That's my Father who art in heaven. The Spirit witness. So it's like Jesus Christ has a spirit, soul, and a body. They're all one. Jesus Christ, the Father. He says, I and the Father are one. Well, that's what he's talking about. He's one with the Holy Spirit, too. But what people do is they confuse these three witnesses right here from Revelation 1 8 with these from Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have the same image as the invisible God. Just like these three witnesses, same exact thing. You have the same thing with your spirit, soul, and your body. You're a Trinity, too. In the same image. Of the invisible God these guys the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is the invisible God from Colossians 1 15 the same my God that no one has seen at any time then this is a lengthy post that I see that this blue guy he's a little bit of an antagonist and so he he writes me he's, he was condescending to me he did, please don't do that this is right the, all this stuff's right up my alley i can see it very clearly and so he's trying to condescend he says you know you you can uh, i respect your right to believe but what you're saying is not in the bible <laughs> in other words you have a right to believe wake up and believe whatever fantasies you want but that's not what scripture says that's not an answer quote somebody from the opening post and then Make your case using scripture for something else. If you want to present a counter argument, a rebuttal, counter argument, that gives me the opportunity to make my clarifying statements. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So in the name of that topic is, is there an official Trinity doctrine? So I'm a big time Trinitarian, but there is no darn way that, I, that I'm going to believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit equals God. When I know this, there are three witnesses testifying for the word. So taking God's three witnesses from Revelation 1 8 and throwing them away and worshiping the Son as the one true God is idolatry. Uh uh. Not going to do that. My Father who art in heaven is a spirit witness of the word. There's a difference. And whenever you know the difference, nobody can come along and try to tell you that. Christ is God. Some people believe he's man and he's God. No, Jesus Christ is neither. He's between God and men because he is something between God and men. He's the son of God. Uh, there's only one of them. He's it. Okay. So um, you can click on that and go and read my explanations to Blue. It was lengthy. It's longer than this post. Lots of diagrams where, I get, I, where I'm showing that. That's why it is included right here in this in this uh, opening post. Okay. Um, nobody can see God because he's infinite. It's that simple. God's infinite. Heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain God. Because heaven and the highest heaven are both created. God's infinite. You can't put an infinite something into a container. Heaven and earth are containers. They have a beginning. They have an end. So, and here's the three witnesses. They're right down here. I'm about to show you. Now, I've already, I mean, if you're brand new, then, I mean, if you've been watching me, you've already seen these diagrams before, starting from the beginning. Okay. So, 
the, the, like I keep saying, Revelation 1.8, that's where the three witnesses of the, of the Almighty are testifying. Matthew 28.19, that's where the three witnesses of the Word are testifying. Okay, It's the, the uh, triune image of the invisible God. They all have the image of a man. They all have a spirit, soul, and a body. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. So this is Genesis 1.1. God, heaven, and earth, they all have their own three witnesses. That's the way it works. And this is our one mediator. Intercessor mediator. Because he is between, guess who? God and men. So man, when it's when First Timothy two five, when it says a man, the man Christ Jesus, it's not talking about a human being man, any more than the three witnesses of the Almighty over here is a literal walking around man. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having the triune image of a man. Spirit, soul, body, our creation. Spirit, soul, body. Then the relationships of God and heaven and earth from from Genesis one one these relationships are the same. So the relationship of the earth to heaven, you see, is that of a body to a soul, and they share this circle. But then, heaven, in the beginning was the Word, and heaven are the same thing. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, they share this circle. God and His Word. In the infinite realm, God and His Word are the same thing. God's Word is still one with God in the infinite realm right now. Heaven is an incarnation. Okay. This diagram shows the heavenly man, Christ Jesus. Right there. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So when you click in your mind, when Paul's talking about Christ Jesus, that's what he's talking about. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man. And when he's talking about Christ in you, just imagine this is you. That's your spirit. This is your body. There's Christ in you. He's living in your soul. Right in here. Okay, so Christ Jesus is the true tabernacle. Can you see how that's a tabernacle? Holy of holies. Holy place. Court. The true tabernacle. That's what Christ Jesus is. And now you can see why last week, and rather than submitting first, the difference between God and my Father who art in heaven that I presented, the difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, because it helps to make more sense right now, because last week we already covered the difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. Okay, so Christ is the two, true tabernacle that the Lord God pitched, which is God, not man, with two veils, just like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. So we've got this diagram here. I wonder if I can click on this. Let's see if we can get that to pop open in the browser. I think we can. See, here we go. So this is how the tabernacle, temple, the tabernacle and the temple are laid out in the same exact triune form of a man. Spirit, soul, body. Holy of holies, holy place, court. Whenever you look down on the temple, it looks like a man. Right down to the sidewalks. And the five little sidewalks that come out to be the fingers. In the temple, you can see it. And then these, the, the, where these different veils are positioned, this is what we should see if this was exactly like this, but this is not exactly what we see in the temple because we are still living in the time before the Reformation. Only the holy place is going to be there at the end. The sanctuary at the end, there's going to be no holy of holies. There's going to be no need for any holy of holies. There's going to be no court either, no need for it. Creation is going to be remade many, many, many times, and we're going to be living souls walking around on the earth. You're not going to see physical bodies. You're not going to see spirits either. You're only going to see the living soul. 
currently we see the physical bodies before the time of Reformation. That's what that boils down to. I know that sounds like it's way out there, but that's what the types say. Okay. So the three witnesses of God, the Almighty, appear at the far left of figure one and the top of figure two. Okay. However, my Father who art in heaven is the Father testifying with the Son and the Holy Spirit above heaven in figure one. Right here. Right. And in the central soul blood section of figure two, placing Christ Jesus between God and men. Exactly what scripture says. Right there. This be the domain of darkness. And this be the kingdom of his beloved son. This is where we're transferred from and raised and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Whenever you're reading Ephesians 2, start at 4, that's where I was just quoting from. Because we've been raised and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is Christ Jesus right here. Now you see these things said in scripture, but where do you ever see diagrams pointing to exactly the way these things work. That's what you have right here. This is from my book, The Mystery Explained, page 97. Okay, so do you see the difference between God and my Father right in heaven? God and my Father right in heaven. Do you see that? I see the difference. Do you see the difference? I hope you do. I hope you see it. So that's the uh, that's the presentation number five for newsletter number five. Next week will be how the mystery diagrams work. But my objective has been to present this, and then so that would be yesterday, every Monday present the next post on a website, and then to write f defending my original statements. So other people on these different boards, they come along and they try to smash it apart. They say, no, my Father art in heaven is God, blah, 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 and they try to prove it. And then that's the time that I make my clarifying statements. And off we go again. So this, at, currently, it's going to be more things to report when we're doing our chat room exercises. Whenever we're doing our Bible study every Tuesday night from 7 to 9, starting on Tuesday, the, uh, the 7th. Of January. So for right now, then this has been the the report, the Mister Report News has been more about what's going on on these different sites, getting my head bashed in, kind of like Trump getting my head bashed in, and uh, going back and forth, and being mistreated, things like that. That stuff's all going to end. This is. This is the way things are. It's been an interesting week at the Christian forums, oh, in the uh, Christian board forums department. Updated version of the two Gospels, two churches for baptism being posted at, this is the place, this place right here. This is where you're encouraged to go there, register, and you're going to be like me. Everything you do is going to be monitored, it's going to be watched. See how they have the binoculars there? But just read the uh, COC, the Code of Conduct, the rules. And, you know, keep your hands to yourself. No food fights. Be respectful to people. And you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do just fine. And that gives you the opportunity to come and click on one of my posts right here and to write whatever your thoughts are. Yes, I agree. No, I don't agree. Okay. You'll notice that every topic started by me and every thread that I write on shows the purple binoculars saying that you're being watched. This is the Bible forum where most of my writing is being done today because m the, um, the uh, moderator admi admin crew are doing their jobs of ensuring everybody follows the code of conduct rules. That's good. It's whenever they try to put their hands on the doctrinal scales. That's, God hates that. I give my view, you give your view, everybody else gets to decide. That's the way it works. The administrators and the moderators are supposed to make sure everybody follows the same rules. It's not that they're supposed that if the moderator is Catholic, well, he doesn't agree with it. 
He doesn't ban people from being Baptist. You see what I mean? You don't ban people from having different views. I'm allowed to believe whatever I want to believe. Just like you are. Right? You present what you want. I present what I want. Everybody else gets to decide. That's what Paul's writing to the Corinthians, saying that there must be factions among you so that those who are approved may become evident among you. So I give my case. I support it by Scripture. You do the same. And what we're doing is we're sowing seeds. You're sowing seeds. I'm sowing seeds. May, it could be that you're going to show me something, something I hadn't seen before. And I really love that. It happens every now and then. People show me something that I haven't seen before. Okay, so then... Uh, so they're watching me, everything that I'm doing, and the banning that Molly at ChristianForms.com, that lady just kind of threw me away. I was writing to her, she wouldn't even respond back to me. She just, just left me banned over on the sideline. So I started a new ticket, and this, this new lady came along. And so she asked me some questions, and I answered her, and then she, she gave me some advice. She told me to go in the blog section. So what you wrote was inappropriate for the section you were in but if you were in the blog section it would have been just fine so she was being real nice to me and she's uh told me to have a nice day and all that and now i can post at christianforms.com like i was let's see here but this one this one it's this one christianforms.com that's right here two gospels and see this is the updated version right here so i was right i just wrote on that today at 902 when i started working here then and I really love this. Really love this. Been doing this. Been on a member of this board since 2004. Written on all kinds of topics. And um, you can go down and you help people. The guy that writes the opening post. That's what you're supposed to do. Is write the person that started the topic. And without hijacking the topic to somewhere else. Because the temptation is there. Just quote him. Don't even answer a word that he says. And just start rambling about something else. People do that sometimes. And you have to write them and remind them. Please forgive, but they, hey, you know, there's nothing in your post that applies to anything in the opening post. To keep everybody going. Then this is where I'm spending time too. So these two places, and this one more than ChristianForms.com. So these things are kind of new here. These people at ChristianForms.com. These people have known me since 2004. He's uh, Dan, and this guy is not re religious, is his name. He's not religious. So these guys, they they know me. I've been here for a long time, even though they say, man, I've, I've been seeing your charts and this stuff for 20 years. It actually it's not been quite that long, but almost. But they even say they're not even going to try to debate me. They know I'm long-winded. They know if they're going to try to debate me, they better pack a lunch, too. So that's the place, the two places that I, that um that I'm visiting. It's mostly on Sunday and Mondays in in putting the newsletter together. There's more. Um, it's only this is only the fifth newsletter, but there's more commentary. Me writing on these different topics back and forth, debates and, and defending arguments and things like that in this newsletter than maybe the other four combined could be there, and I'll, i'm going to show you some of that here in just a minute so this is the place you do not want to go gracecenter.com and i did write the owners i went and found it how to get a hold of the owners of this board right here because they are unaware of what this Wycliffe guy this Wycliffe's whatever his name is his name is jared but i wrote him a, a detailed i didn't put it down here but a detailed um, email on what the admin and what the moderators are doing over here. Anybody doesn't agree with their homegrown dogma. Anybody. They're being attacked. We're being attacked by these people. Not supposed to do that. That's breaking the rules. And um, you don't call somebody a heretic. You don't call them names. You don't flame them. There's a, there's a lot of rules. Things that you are not supposed to do. And whenever the the moderators and the admins are doing it then that shows that there's a serious problem but whenever you go and look at the activity on this board there's almost no activity i will be the only person in the room terrell and no guests were, were even in this room but we're, i was in the non 
I'm I'm down here in the um, non-traditional uh, where nobody goes. That's what they do. So instead of banning you, look at the date on this, the 23rd, a week ago. So I took a snapshot, and I sent a snapshot of this to the the people that own the board. So that's this is what he's doing. My replies that I made down to these people don't even show up. They show up as pink. They have to be approved by the moderator. But the moderator, this idiot here, he is not going. He's not approving any of my posts. So I may as well be banned. All right. This is the way they ban you without banning you. And th they say terrible things to you, and then they so you can read it, and then you they delete the message. They do some. There's some bad people. There's some bad boards. This Grace Center place is not the place where you want to go. Jonathan, David, Kathy, Dr. Laura, Kenna, Dr. Deborah, Scott, Care, Galen, Peter, and Gary. Same names as last week. No new subscribers to the Mr. Report newsletters for this week. I've got a lot of interest. A lot of people that are writing me. This one lady wants to know she wanted to be to have to subscribe before the end of the year well today's the 31st you have till midnight so all the buttons and everything are going to change today for uh, the mystery report newsletters and for the brat project black star the um survivor group program and the tutor program everything's going to change um later today so how do i receive the mystery report oh it, this is joan oh th yeah this is what i was just mentioning to you i forgot that even put it in here how can I receive paid newsletter before the end of 2019? It's these two buttons that are right here, the ones that I just showed you. Two bucks a month, four bucks a month. Basically, is what it boils down to. This is the advanced the premium programs are over here for the Black Star Survivor Group program. Over here is the tutor program, the chat program, right over here. Then the basics right here. And then you you want to you, you know two, you want to be a two dollar guy? You're going to all the newsletters. But then you want to join us in chat. You want to uh, have me as your personal tutor. You don't have to go over here. You just go here. This is the upgrade button. Once you're a newsletter only guy and you want to get the premium, you just use the upgrade button. 50, uh, 25 plus 25 is 50. That's the way that it works. If I wanted to put this these things in here, it goes, Sometimes people write me the same exact, ask the same exact question. Put it in the newsletter, some, present it in a video like this one, and then you can watch and you go, oh, that's how you do it. It's, that, it's really that simple. Then I send you a notification email. I'll send you the ebook version of my book for free. Attach to your notification email. Show you the, how to download the program so you can read it. It's going to be Adobe Digital Editions. So you, you'll be able to open up this book and read it just pretty much like a PDF. Clarifying statements. This is where, see, these are previous posts that I have written. This is from week one. And then somebody comes along and then they want to challenge. This is the guy that's challenging me. And then my defending statements. Because sometimes you're not going to just see it in the opening post. You're going to read it just like I read you the post. About the difference between God and my Father in heaven. Sometimes you're not going to be able to see it that simply. But when someone comes along and makes a counter argument, and then you see my defending statements, my clarifying statements, then the, the lights, the lights can start coming on. That's what the um, mods and the admins were trying to teach me. That my opening post doesn't have to be that long. Just get the ball rolling. Put enough information there to get it rolling, right? But the uh, this post is only a quarter long. The opening post that I just read to you, God, my father, and evidence, quarter the distance. It's quarter the length of my original longer post. Because I had thrown everything in it but kitchen sink. And it stood, withstood the test of debate for a long, long, long time. But what the, the administrator was telling me is, make your simple case and maintain the interest. Somebody's going to read a smaller post before they're going to read a longer one, right? And then you can bring your other points in in your clarifying statements. And the lights came on. I go, bosh, that's what I should have been doing all along. So I, um, I really, I, I want to play by the rules. And I appreciate the administrators and the mods, moderators that come along and, and 
give you and give us good advice that it's actually helping me. So it's a, uh, you know, it was good constructive criticism, and I appreciate it very much. So I'm going to get down into I can see in this one right here, in uh, brick objectivity guy. Then um, I'm going to and quote. I'm going to be I'm quoting here First John five six through eight. And um, I know that Trevor, he really likes that I quote the Whitecliff Bible that's right here. The, the, at the part at the very end here. The, the Whitecliff is the only one that I've seen so far that actually got it right. And that, this is the, from the critical text and the literal Greek. In, in another post, it's down here lower than uh, actually breaking down each Greek term for this verse that's right here even though Wycliffe used to receive text in verse 7 that is wrong he did get verse 8 that is right so that's why you have an NSB NASB the New American Standard Version for everything that's here that's from the critical text but then Wycliffe picks it up at the very end here so I'm uh, looking at the time there's no way I'm going to be able to read to you there's a lot of commentary, a lot of back and forth right here. Extremely valuable. So, um, whenever you're a doctrinal specialist, that's what I am. Whether it's kingdom doctrine for Peter, John, and James. Whether it's grace doctrine for the body of Christ. Right? Prophets in the law for the Old Testament. For the, to the uh, sons of Israel. And some people run the impression that, that Christ coming, Christ dying for sins, that released everybody from the law. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Israel is still under the law. Remember, they didn't accept the gospel of the kingdom. They didn't accept. They were demanding Christ be crucified. That was the transgression from Romans 11.11. 11, so that the good news of the gospel of the grace of God goes to the Gentiles. So Peter, John, and James, even in Christ's day, they were still under Mosaic law. And after God raised Christ from the dead. They continued to preach water baptism for the goodness of sins. They did not even, did, couldn't even conceptualize that we would be saved by God's grace through faith apart from works by obedience through the obedience of faith in Christ's shed blood. That it's his blood that's washed us clean. That our redemption is in him. That we're baptized into him. That we are active participants in his death, burial, and resurrection. Peter, John, and James couldn't get that. And according to our definition of what it means to be a believer today, Peter, John, and James were unbelievers. Christ told him over and over again that he was going to be killed and that he was going to be raised on the third day over and over and over again. And whenever the third day came, where was Peter, John, and James? They were crying. They were in the upper room crying. And Mary Magdalene goes and tells them that she's seen them. The women are showing up at the tomb, but they're showing up at the tomb with linens. They're, get, they're ready to anoint the body <laughs> because the linens and the oil is symbolic of unbelief. Peter, John, and James not being there means they were unbelievers. If our gospel is that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead on the third day, right? And you don't believe that, you're an unbeliever. Well, that's what Peter, John, and James were. But they obeyed the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom doesn't have anything to do with Christ being raised for sins. That's what Paul's gospel is all about. But Paul didn't receive that until afterwards. And then Paul had to go down and submit the gospel that I preached to them among the Gentiles. And for fear of failure. In fear of failure. Because Peter, John, and James didn't know about it yet. That was 50 AD. Acts 15, Galatians 2. Two totally different churches. This two heads of the different churches that were meeting at that meeting. And so I scratch my head and go, how can people not realize that, the, that there's a gospel to the uncircumcised and there's a gospel to the circumcised and that there's a bride and a body? How can they not see it when the bride and the body are meeting at the famous meeting in Jerusalem and Paul's submitting the gospel that he preaches among the Gentiles? Why is he submitting a gospel if they all preach in the same gospel? Because they're not. There's a gospel of the circumcised and a gospel of the uncircumcised. Gospel of the kingdom, gospel of the grace of God. This is as I've been showing to you. Showing you. So this is kind of, if you've been following me, this is kind of old news. But you see how long these discussions can get? And the 
devil is in the details. The defending arguments. This is this is a fellow that says, sorry my mistake. I somehow missed that the OP was in the biblical debates. It's not intended to be a full rebuttal. So I tell him, all good. This was my first opening post on the forum, but it's not my first rodeo. I've been doing this a long time. Since I was a teenager, now I'm in my 60s, so what does that tell you? I've been doing this a long time. Doing a long time doesn't mean that you're doing it the right way. You can be doing things all wrong. I mean, there's plenty of people, even people who have been doing it longer than me, don't have a clue what's going on. So choose your tutors wisely. Make sure that what we're saying matches what's written in the scriptures. So you, you see scriptures all over what I'm saying. That gives you every opportunity to quote me and prove that I'm wrong in any of the ter interpretations. Good luck with that. So we're only on page 15, and I'm not kidding you. I keep doing this. I spent a lot of time this week. I'm not tracking the uh, patterns of the seven big quakes, am I? The big seven big quakes aren't happening. Why are they not happening? When they happen every single year, back when back 2014, the dynamics changing. And all of a sudden, in the twinkling of an eye, all this is going to change. Everything's going to change. And what I'm showing you in this newsletter is going to be 10,000 times more important than what's in the Project Black Star investigation. I'm just saying. Black Star is almost here. That's why the Earth is responding the way it's responding. And people are going to be saying peace and safety. We usually have 18 7 magnitude earthquakes on average every year. This year we had 9. 9. Half that number. What's going on? How come we've only had one in like 170 something? That I'm, I'm going to do that report tomorrow. We've only had one and that happened at the backside alignment. I haven't seen the second one yet. Lots and lots and lots of commentary. Back and forth. This is a fella. You can see where I disagree with him. If I did disagree with you, then I, I don't, I'm not bashful about just saying we disagree on that part. Back and forth. Oh, this lady, the wheat, the wheat in the weeds. That's the wheat and the tares. Some people use, this uh, person is using the NIV. I do not recommend the New International Version. Do not recommend that to anybody. It is corrupt. Big time. New American Standard. Lockman Foundation and the uh, New King James Version if your first language is English that's what I highly recommend if you love scriptural debate this is this is your newsletter right here as we move along then you're going to see me providing the defending arguments for more and more of the different topics that's kind of the idea the gospel of the kingdom oh this is where that uh, I was asked, I was trying to keep from getting banned. So I'm allowed to quote, this is from my original post. So I just showed the top four, Doctrine of Precepts, so I could show how one and one are opposite. This is according to the revelation of the mystery, not seen by the Old Testament prophets. But the gospel of the kingdom is seen by the prophets. They know the kingdom's coming. Lord God promises to betroth Israel to himself, Hosea 2, start 19. So that's supposed to happen, that scene. But what Paul's doing down here, salvation by grace through faith, the good news that we're going to be saved by Christ shed blood, that's not in the Old Testament. Since forgiven through the redemption that is in Christ is shed blood, the gospel of the kingdom is something different. Testimonials, new section. Thank you very much to Barb. Thank you very much to Kathy. And Kathy's talking about a commitment. She wants to work with uh, a simple series of children's books. And it seems to me that the simple series of books could be for babes in Christ, whether you're 8 or whether you're 80. When you just first come along, many, many people look at my work and just say it's too complicated. It's too complicated. But I'm like the professor. I'm, 
I'm the uh, the college professor. These I see it so so easily, and I've seen it for so long that it's difficult for me to imagine just starting off again. That happens whenever you've been doing this for 40 years. So fresh eyes, brand new. Someone comes along, they see it, they're excited about it. Kathy is in a position to write on these things simply so that people that have never seen it before can come along and see it. I am not, I'm disqualified from it. I, I can't do that. It's very, very difficult when you know something's like t teaching someone bricklaying. I'm a polished, finished journeyman mason, commercial, working on universities and hospitals and things like that. It's So when I'm teaching somebody to do it, you realize that your apprenticeship takes four years, right? And you start off at the starting off with the very simple things is difficult for me. I'm I'm it's easier for me to help someone when they've already have some experience. Instead of when they're just learning how to put the trowel on their the mud on their trowel, their mortar. They're just starting off the beginning. That's kind of wet nurse stuff. There's some things for mommy, right? Change the diapers and things for the babes. And then there's things for the father once the child grows up more can run and you know this and that so this looks like a really really great opportunity right here Kathy she sees it and the thing that I liked about Barb that she's been doing overlapping circles like you see in my diagrams using the Venn diagrams and for me that began in the 80s and when she describes her age and when she started doing that and drawing the circles, she was doing it for me. So she sees it. It's very exciting to me whenever somebody comes along and sees it. Because some people, lots of people, they look at my work and they cannot see it. And they're never going to see it. It has to do with the veils within us being intact or being broken. Some people can see it and God chooses people to see it. And off they go. And it's exciting for me because I'm from a family of ministers and my my uncles, who are mostly now passed away, that had their churches. Now their sons have their churches and we argue that many of them can't see it, right? So whenever somebody can, then it shows me that God has put his hand on them and said, yay, hey, you, you're ready to see it. Because when you look at the definition of the term mystery, it makes sense. Thank you, ladies, very, very much. And now both of you writing me. But personally, I'm going through some really hard things right now. And this medical condition, and it's not just the dentist thing. There's more going on here than only a few people know about. And it's just terrible what's happening. And you ladies writing really helped me. Um featured section and um, this was written knowledge of the forever time with um, Stacy writing and then um, appreciate you guys sending me healing energy and the power of prayer is something that's really great and um, thank you for writing and sharing in the healing energy I watched the video and found some parts in uh, interesting and uh, see so she's gonna send me she about this uh, series the um, knowledge of the forever time and there's gonna be some good some good things in here <laughs> there are things that are just really not that good so I, I explain it the best that I can and um, the thing to realize what the people in this video are trying to say is that there's a uh, the tree of life and things in Andromeda and uh, uh, this just doesn't work that way. There's not a certain place that we're going. It's not that it just really doesn't work that way. He this creation is held together inside of heaven. Heaven is holding it together. And heaven is inside of God's infinite realm. So I show you the tabernacle form of everything all the time. This is how it really is. So it's not like you're going to go into any 
place inside this creation that's going to be this place it's actually in every direction heaven is in every point outside it's in every direction and then this realm the father son and holy spirit it's christ jesus is incarnate in believers an incarnation heaven is an incarnation this heaven that's containing our our entire universe the heavens and the earth are contained in here but it's the this is the incarnation of christ in you so the incarnation of Christ in you gives you access to this heaven that's right here. Then God incarnates inside of Christ in you. That's how God is in us reconciling the world to himself when we preach the gospel. He's right here inside of us. He's closer to us than our own breath. He's in Christ in us. So that we have this same form that I'm showing you right here. It's a little more complicated. And then it's going to talk about this video, if, if you watch it, it's going to talk about the, uh, the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid. The Pillar of Isaiah. It's there for a reason. And this is it's from my book, The Mystery Explained. The Tabernacle of David that has fallen that's going to be rebuilt. It's not just a building. It is water, blood, and spirit. This wilderness that's right here. Israel went through. Out there for 40 years. Right on the edge, on the outside of that, you see, you've got Egypt and the pyramids and the Nile River. And you keep going east and you're going to wind up in the Promised Land, following the path of Israel, escaping from the world slash Egypt, right? Well, that pillar sits right out here and it's a sign to the nations. The Gentiles that are coming to this tabernacle of David that's about to be rebuilt. And they're, every step they take beyond that pyramid, towards, right, towards Jerusalem, towards the temple. That's what is the, that's the truth of what they're trying to share this information that's right here. But that pillar that's the, in Egypt is there for a reason. And it's going to have meaning in the future when the tabernacle of David is restored. And um, this is from my book. See, David, his tabernacle is restored down here. That's what the tabernacle looks like. And here's the tabernacle where the lamb is. And as the lamb is doing things in heaven, David's doing them on the earth. They're connected. Heaven and earth are connected. Then what the lamb's doing here, God's doing here inside the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is an entire realm. So if you're looking at this with me, this is Christ. He's laying on his side on the altar. This is Adam. This is the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven, who is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the earth, who is the heavens, heaven, and the earth. The heavens is where the angels dwell. The earth is where the world is, the men, the lesser half of the same angels. These are put back together again, in the Lamb. He's the one who takes away the sin, the sin of the world. So as this is happening here, the Father and the Holy Spirit counterparts are being made one in God. Okay, so this is Jacob's ladder. This is Mount Moriah. See, this is the new heaven and new earth. This should actually be singular. The new heaven is here. The new earth is here. That includes the heavens, heaven, and the earth. And people don't die anymore. Think about it. Death and Hades are thrown in the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, right? Done. New heaven and new earth. People don't die anymore. How you go to heaven? That's what Jacob's Ladder is all about. People on the earth, they just keep living and living and living. They mature, mature, mature. They approach the throne. David's throne, and they serve him as a prophet or as a priest. He's the king. This is the tabernacle. They mature. They're done. They don't. They never die. Death is done. When they're, whenever they're mature, they go up this ladder, and guess where they're standing? Sea of glass with Peter, John, and James. Right here. On the opposite sides, the body of Elijah, it's the unseen sea. That's where they're an angelic super half is descending from the heavens at the same time same time 
at the end of the age, these guys are judged by us for joining us in the Lamb. Whenever they go through the marriage supper of the Lamb, their angel half and their man half is reconnected and they join us in the Lamb and in uh, Christ Jesus too. Because this Lamb is the incarnation of this whole realm in the center of the throne here. So they are going, Peter, John, and James, all the hosts of heaven, they're all going to be in Christ by works. We are in the Lamb by obeying the gospel. So what God is doing is he's showing all these heavenly authorities. See the highest heaven? Heavenly authorities. He's showing them all that his grace is greater than all the works of angels and men combined. The last one to join us in Christ with lives hidden with Christ in God. Peter, John, and James, the first three chosen to be disciples of Christ on the earth. First is last, and the last is first. At the very end of all the ages, Peter, John, and James come. They are, they're the ones that have no faith at all. That's why they weren't at the tomb. So when Christ says that if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could move these mountains, he wasn't talking about they were going to move mountains. He was telling them that their faith was not even equal to that of a mustard seed. They didn't have any faith. Then here's uh, Trevor. Thank you for writing me this morning. Then um, he just asked me a simple question, but it gave me this is my this is my mode here here recently, realizing that the earth changes in the world. We we don't have very much longer here. So then um, he writes. He has a quick question. He was just reading Ezekiel 37, and he says, "Is the everlasting covenant in?" Um, Ezekiel 37:26 tied to tied into the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14:6 in any way, and the action, the answer is going to be no. There's there's no connection between them at all. Uh, there's no connection between the events of Ezekiel 37:1 and the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14:6, and so I'm going to begin at the beginning and give a a good. See, if you write me at the website you're not going to get this kind of an answer. But Trevor is is a supporter and whenever one of the supporter, whenever you guys write me, like Bonnie writes me, you get a different kind of answer. Okay? So we, I begin at the beginning, connect the dots between future events, so you're going to be able to put those events on this timeline. That's right here. Now, the long and the short, I'm looking at this, and I'll, I want to let you guys go. The long and the short is, is that Revelation 14.6 happens before this judgment, before the seven years of tribulation. During this evil age, it's right here. Ezekiel 37 is the new heaven and the new earth. So you have David, and, and you go back to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, David is installed as the prince during this day of the Lord. That is in Ezekiel 34, 23 through, 30, uh, 23 through 25. But then you see a dozen uses of the term desolation. Desolation here, desolation. This is made desolate because the Messiah, the prince, that's who David is. He gets cut off. And that's in Daniel 9, 26. There's 68 weeks to go whenever he's cut off. But God has to reproduce the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are all incarnate on the earth as men, and they put an end to David the prince, the Messiah the prince. They put an end to him. They kill him. Just like Adam was killed in the infinite realm. Because the devil, the beast, and the false prophet, those are the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of Satan. His three witnesses walking around as a man, walking around as men, and they destroy. That's how the abomination of desolation is set up. That all happens over here. Some people think it happens here, but this is how the, Paul is the only one that sees how the day of the Lord begins. The prophets see how it ends. Jesus Christ, Matthew 24, talks about how it ends. Way over here, our rapture is 3,600 years from the tribulation. That's how wrong that uh, 
denominationalism. Mixing the water and the blood of Jesus Christ's ministries together means you cannot see the difference between the beginning of the day of the Lord and the end of the day of the Lord. And there are two, black star comes here, black star comes here again. 3,600 years is what's going to be in between. Scripture says, as a thousand years, because it's so long as it takes. This so long as it takes to fulfill all the words of the prophets of old. 3,600 years. The gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached to the whole world during this period. And then the end shall come, Matthew 24, 14. We're over here at the end. See, we're 3,600 years from that. We see the signs, the earth changes that Christ mentions, because the black star is coming on both of these occasions. Destruction here in May, destruction here in November. Okay, so the tabernacle of David is what is about to be restored according after these things. I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins and I will restore it so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name. They're going to be called through the gospel of the kingdom like Cornelius. There's going to be nobody to preach Christ shed blood throughout the day of the Lord. All the ministers, evangelists, preachers are going to be taken. The Holy Spirit is going to return to Elijah on the banks of the Jordan River, and he's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. There's going to be no more word of the cross. We're already in heaven. The the um, bad guys, the cohorts, the evil powers of this darkness are going to be chained. That's where we come in. Elijah is going to restore everything on the earth because we are sitting in the heavenly seats vacated by Satan's minions. They're going to be allowed unchained at the end of the age but to incarnate on the earth as men they don't have heavenly authority anymore we have it if satan's walk around as a man on the earth we're going to be in heaven looking down on him it's going to be great I'm looking forward to it battle of armageddon everything guess we're on the winning side of that satan and all the bad guys the world is full of satan and all the bad guys the last kingdom disciple that obeyed the gospel of the kingdom is martyred so that when the two witnesses come, Revelation 11, there's none left. There's going to be none left. No kingdom disciples. Peter, John, and James, and everybody that's killed during the upcoming day of the Lord, they're all going to be on the sea of glass. No more uh, disciples are going to be added to their number. Because only the devil's children are left at the end when the two witnesses come. So it's Adam and Eve returning to testify to their disobedient ch children, the sons of guess who? Cain. <laughs> yeah. And they, there, there's no escape for them. There's no rapture for them. There's, there's only the black star coming in destruction. The whole earth. And then, uh, they're all thrown into the lake of fire, all the bad guys. Before. So this is, um, what I was explaining to you. This is what it says. Then I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David. And he will feed them. And he will feed them himself. And he will be their shepherd. You see the Lamb of God that's in heaven? He's the shepherd. He's in the center of the throne. He's doing those things in heaven, what David's doing on the earth. He says, I will be their Lord and will be their God. And my servant David will be a prince among them. And I have spoken. So he's not king yet. Prince. It's called Messiah the Prince by Daniel. I will make a covenant of peace with them and eliminate harmful beasts, blah, 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 blah. This is when he's installed during the day of the Lord. And then he's going to be installed again in the new earth. That's whenever he is king and he's king forever. My servant king will be king over. See, not prince, just a prince anymore. He will be king over them. They will have one shepherd and they will walk. So as the lamb is spreading his tabernacle over those on the sea of glass, David is putting his tabernacle over the priests and the prophets down on the earth on earth as it is in heaven and on earth because remember heaven's heaven and earth that's from the earth of Genesis 1 1 so this is the highest heaven is heaven to the lamb that's here like heaven is heaven to us that are on the earth so just when we get to here we're serving as members of the lamb 
then you and I, members of Christ's body, we are already here. We already have lives hidden with Christ in God. We have an incarnation here in heaven, and we have one in the Lamb. We're an ambassador sent into this world, heaven, heaven, and earth, from here. Okay. So as God who is, is doing things up here with his elect, spreading his tabernacle, the Lamb's doing it here, David's doing it here, all these three realms are all becoming one and the same thing. And by the time this realm is completely restored, the restoration of all things, right? This entire, this is Adam laying on his, on his uh, altar. He's restored. Here's Christ laying on the altar. He's restored. This is the first Adam and this is the last Adam. Because all this is is Adam being restored. This is the Adam's soul. This is his body. So whenever Christ and Adam walk together, just like they did in the garden, before Eve was ever taken out of his side. It was just Adam and, and, and the Lord God. They're going to walk back towards this second veil. And as they're walking through this veil, heaven and earth are going to become the same thing. The first and the last are going to become the same thing. And guess who's going to pop out, pop back into the infinite realm, completely restored? Adam. Christ doesn't go back there. Christ is already there. God and His Word are the same thing already. This was all an incarnation. This is all an incarnation. So that one Son of God could be restored, and His name is Adam. That's why this is the last Adam, and this is the first Adam. This is the soul, and this is the body. Becoming one again with the Spirit in the infinite realm. But there, is, there's no such thing as spirit, soul, or body in the infinite realm. They're all singularities. That's what's happening. Adam's being restored. So he steps back in the infinite realm. Completely restored. And on his chest plate, the jewels of Satan. <laughs> so he has access to all those mystery places in the infinite realm that he didn't have access to previously before he was murdered. Really, really cool stuff. In Christian debate, how Paul... Con and th these are my topics up above that where I'm defending statements and testimonials and things. This is Christian debate. These are different people's topics where I go and I write on them. How Paul contradicts Jesus on the most important doctrine of Christianity. Paul doesn't contradict Jesus. Christ in the four Gospels is teaching kingdom doctrine to Israel only. Paul received our Gospel through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ gave him this information, but he couldn't give it while he was on the earth because he had to trick Satan into killing him by being the king of the kingdom. See, it worked, didn't it? But Grace doctrine, that's Christ's blood ministry, was given through the Apostle Paul as a steward, like it's given through Peter and the keys of the kingdom in the four Gospels. Two totally different things. There's no such thing as a contradiction. A contradiction. Paul doesn't contradict Christ. Grace doctrine contradicts kingdom doctrine. If you're, if you're a kingdom disciple, you're under the law. If you're under grace doctrine, you're not under the law. Completely opposite. Well, you can't expect that they're going to be the same thing. They're opposite. So here's Blue 2. He's challenging me. And uh, this fellow here, he's condescending. He's condescending. Some people, they write a lot of posts, and they think that their reputation alone is enough. They don't even have to quote you. They just come out and say, oh, that's wrong. And like everybody in the whole board is supposed to follow them around, you know, go on. Hosanna, Hosanna, because they've written 10,000 posts. Give me a break. No. You quote me, and then you show anything wrong using supported statements, supported by Scripture. If you're just going to come in and wave your arms around and say, oh, you're wrong, then you haven't proven anything. Every single word in the opening post stands, if you're going to let it stand. The Gospel of John claims that Jesus is God. No, the Gospel of John does not claim Jesus is God. It claims that he's the Son of God. John the Baptist, right off the bat, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I have seen and I bear witness that this is the Son of God. Jesus Christ says, I am the Son of God. John, what is it, John 10, 34 through 36. He says, you're gods. I mean, I'm characterizing. But why are you throwing rocks at me because I'm saying I'm the Son of God? I just said you're gods. David says you're gods. You are gods in the infinite realm. You are. 
And Christ knows that heaven is only an incarnation. Only an incarnation, because he and his he and God are one and the same in the infinite realm, but he's walking around as an incarnation. And Jesus Christ is not only an incarnation, he's an incarnation of an incarnation of an incarnation. Because the Lamb of God in heaven of this realm is an incarnation of Christ Jesus that is the entire highest heaven. The Lamb of God, guess what? He's still there. He's right there right now. But he incarnated onto the earth as Jesus Christ. That's why John the Baptist says, the Lamb of God. He calls him who he is. The Lamb of God. The Lord God who made Adam in Genesis 2 is the Lamb of God. The Lord God. So the garden in, between Genesis 2-7 and Genesis 3-2, everything's happening in heaven. Where the Lamb is in the center of the throne. That's where it's happening. When Adam and Eve are cast down, they're given human skins. That's in Genesis 3-21. Recent incarnation. Everything before that. Going back to Genesis 2 7, happens in heaven. Okay, so I'm quoting the, the entire OP. And then I'm going to come down here and give my reply. I usually like to thank people for starting a topic. Then, uh, is there an official Trinity doctrine? I'm a big time Trinitarian. But I did not believe that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those three witnesses of the Word. Very different. Oh, here, this is the diagram that I was telling you about. Whenever John is looking in Revelation, he sees the Lamb, face of the man, and he sees the, the three witnesses of the Almighty. He sees straight through all three of these realms becoming one thing from this direction. The face of the man and the three beasts, they look like four living creatures, but they're not. Three witnesses of God testifying with the Lamb, Christ. Face We see God in the face of the man, in the face of Christ. So look at the time. There's still more. <laughs> look at it. There's, there's more that's in here. And um, lots of articles sent in by David and Tanya. And this is about the chat room benefit. It's going to start on... 7th of January, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 7 to 9, so it's expected to run, and then we'll see how it goes. The, um, eventually, when I started the uh, chat room program for my research group back in 2011, it started off with just a few members, and then we ended up having 365 members with 65 administrators, that, and the room was open 24-7. So we'll see how it starts off and we'll see how it, how it matures and grows by the end of the year. Hope to be calling out your name as a new supporter this coming week. And um, that's what I want to share with you for this week. A lot of exciting things happening. I'm spending a lot of time over here. I really love this. And you'll see when we pass through this veil why. That's important. This is, a, this, this is far more important than what's being shared in the other newsletter program. Whenever we're standing in heaven looking back, the things that are here are going to be far more important. Even though standing here on the earth and looking forward, what's in the Black Star newsletter seems like it could be very much more important. But um, the sons of God are jockeying for position in the heavenly places. We're jockeying for position and those who have their doctrine straight and those that teach others to have their doctrine straight, those are the sons of God that are going to be put near the top of the food chain. It looks like a heavenly pyramid. Christ is at the top. You want to be one of the stones that are directly underneath at the bottom. I mean, just right underneath where Paul, Barnabas, and Titus are. Rather than being the bottoms of the pyramid stone, the common stones, it's not really where you want to be. We have the opportunity to surpass those by getting these things right now in this Evil age, I mean, blessed if you can see it. God bless you. But if you can see it in the evil age, when Satan and his minions are in power, that's even greater. But then we're going to have another opportunity once we are in the members of the Lamb and we're working with Elijah in heaven. You're going to have another opportunity to jockey for better position then. You don't have an opportunity that's going to, as great as it is now, though. And then once we get through that part and we get to the judgment at the end of the age and go to the new earth, it's going to be very difficult for members of Christ's body to ascend at all, any at all. 
We're all going to be, everybody's going to see things as they are, and everything's going to be a level playing field. That's not the case right now. You have a chance to, as a member of Christ's body, to get ahead, to jump ahead, seeing these things of God's wisdom. When God taps you on the shoulder and lets you see it, like with Barb, right? Then, uh, and like with Kathy, then th that's a great, great opportunity. You are lucky. So what are you going to do with it? Put the talent under the rock? Let it just be there? Or are you going to take it out and you're going to invest it into something that's really, really good? Thank you guys again. Get more information right here at the website. Right over here. More information right here. This is how you subscribe. Right here. Get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained. Appreciate your support very, very much. And I'll see you on the next uh, mystery report. It'll be coming out next Tuesday. Maybe the, the time, this period that's coming up is extremely busy for me. With lots of programs. Hundreds and hundreds of notifications to send out. So January is really, really, um, everything is kind of crammed together. It's crammed up together. Plus I have interviews that had to be canceled. that have to be rescheduled for this in January. It's going to be really, really busy. So for, I might see a special video. Um, coming and uh, it could be that, that I'm just so swamped that I'm not be able, be able to do that until after all the notifications get out We'll just see how things work. And we'll play it by ear. Thank you guys again get more information here at the website And if you want if you are non subscriber, you want more information write me right here Thanks again, I'll see you on the next um, mystery report update